Okay, um, I'm Evan Clark. I'm a freshman at Stanford um, and a member of the Brown Stanford 2011 Art Gem team. Um, and I also got really into spoken word poetry this year. So when I saw the posters for this, I was like, dang, I can combine these two new interests of mine. So I've written a poem for you guys. I hope it's, I hope it's fun. Um, <laughs> It's October 3rd, 2010, and I'm standing in front of a microphone, shaking. I've never done slam poetry before, and I don't know how the gods in front of me will react to this awkward freshman with big glasses who doesn't pronounce his T's sometimes, but wants to be in their poetry group. See, I've watched these wizards mince words together like spices, make stanzas flow like river rapids that diverge and reform over rocks of rhetoric, flowing rough then smooth then pitter-patter slither slide pop. They make the beat of poetry pull at the rhythm of the heart, hold hands like teenage lovers at a concert, pull each other deeper into the crowd, into the boom, thump, swish of the music, for a moment find truth in the mixture of sounds that washes over you. I don't know how they do it, all I know is I want to be like them. See, I didn't know what I was getting myself into then, but soon I had a group of friends that would sit in a circle, spit poetry like fire, flash high-flying fantasies across my mind with fantastic fables. We'd contemplate our souls, listen to love stories, allegories, wordplay better than foreplay, and occasionally that little droplet of truth. Now, it's June 14th, 2011. I'm a little bit older, not much wiser, and I'm standing in front of a microphone again, in front of a new set of gods, wanting to be accepted. But this time, I'm not shaking or well, <laughs> not as much, and I still don't know what I'm getting myself into, but I'm not as scared. It's kind of the same. Synthetic biology is a lot like poetry. Yes, I did just put synthetic biology into a poem, and yes, it was a mouthful, but no, that's not gonna stop me from trying to be poetic. We just need a better name. I propose we call it gene weaving. It's a lot like dream weaving, a little bit magical. Make E. coli express genes like artists, paint whole new horizons, pull food, fuels, and materials from green sludge and thin air to build whole new worlds. And I don't know how you wizards do it, but there's a way that synthetic biology pulls at the heart streams like a poet, so damn it, I want to learn how to do that too. Transcribe bases, translate proteins, transform cells. You wizards transmogrify dreams than Professor McGonagall ever did. <laughs> I'm talking oligosynthesis and bio bricks use restriction enzymes to cut up Watson and Crick. DNA scissors used to mix and configure life in whole new ways. Now that's just slick. GFP, RFP, cerulean, fluorescent protein from a jellyfish is wrapping in biosensors, diffusion tensors, unlocked thanks to dream weaving, it's pretty brain teasing. What will be next? A cure for cancer? Bioreactors to synthesize food, fuel, and drugs from sunlight and air? Novel building materials, spider silk, or biocemented bricks? A solution to global warming? They say that the 1800s were the age of chemistry, the 1900s the time of physics. This century is the era of biology. Gene weaving has endless potential. As time marches forward, countless events will play themselves in, out in ways that are largely determined by you. With great power comes great responsibility. So, to my fellow witches and wizards-to-be, I've added something to help avoid catastrophe. I end with a quote from Albus Dumbledore. It is our choices that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities. Thanks. <laughs>